Fifteen years ago, I used to rent a small house on the south end of Lake Moody in Frostproof, Florida. There was a large avocado tree on that street filled with fruit, and one day I stopped and asked an older man sitting by a beat-up Winnebago if I could pick a couple. That man was Clarence Thibodeau. I left with some avocados and a copy of his autobiography titled My Life in the Divine Command. Later I found out he was a World War II Navy vet stationed on the USS Pensacola and a world-renowned painter. Clarence died in 2015 at the age of 95. This is a short film of his works. My name is uh, Lorraine Thibodeau Duncan, and I was born in the city of Lake Wells in 1931. And what is your relation to Clarence Thibodeau? I am Clarence Thibodeau's sister. I was born in Lake Wells, and he was born in South Dakota uh, in 1920. I'm going to read uh, the last will that my brother Clarence Thibodeau wrote and then uh, giving me all power to everything. It says, to whom it may concern, he wrote this in July 28, 2006. I, Clarence J. Thibodeau, brother of Lorraine Duncan, being of sound mind and body, write personally this written notice that my beloved sister, Lorraine Duncan, <laughs> whom I am dedicated to her for many years, she has helped and sustained my life through her sacrifices. I might need to start over. That's okay. Uh, and also purchased most of all of my paintings. I am indebted to her for many things that no other living relative ever did for me. So, therefore, even though she purchased most of them, I give her to her the rest of them that are in her home at North Lake Florence Drive. No one else can do, make a claim to them at all for any reason after my demise or death. Now this is his, if you see all the stuff I haven't gone through. And he's got lots of prints here. All of these are prints of different paintings. And I got a lot of these of the ship's letter. This is of course a book that he wrote. This is another book he wrote and it's not been published. But he was reading a poem out of this. This got a lot of poems that he wrote in that one. Let me see if I can work this thing. Once upon a mountainside, and on a midnight clear, I heard a mother nature song. Her songs I love to hear. I lay inside my sleeping bag, absorbing every sound, aware I was a child of hers, as I lay upon the ground. Let me get these out of the way. See, these are some of the paintings that he made copies of that he did on the ship. And uh, he sent a letter home, and all the boys on the ship wanted him to uh, make copies of all of his paintings because they, cause they experienced the same battles that he did. So they would give him money, and I got a letter showing what, how he worked with my dad on sending money home and getting the man to do the prints and doing all of this up, which was a big job. And he made lots of copies of it, and I've got, still have some of his work here. But uh, seven of these paintings are in Smithsonian. And uh, Admiral Nimitz, uh, he met him personally on the ship. Uh, it was on an aircraft carrier that he met him. And he's one that gave him permission to be able to paint after a battle. He'd set up on the ship and paint about it. Um, of all the paintings that I, I own, the one I guess I like the best is the Key West painting because it depicts a rainstorm in Key West, Florida. But there's also another one, uh, the Wash Woman, that is 
that he did back in the 50s that uh, it's on some kind of wood paneling and it looks like he painted it yesterday because it, if you put it on canvas they tend to shrink or something and crack but once you put it on a panel then it stays nice forever so that painting has to be about 60 years old and it's a really nice one too My uh, brother would love to be remembered for all of his artwork that he did, especially the Divine Command. For some reason, that meant so much because he felt like it was instructed by God himself and that it tells a story. And uh, the book that he wrote on the Divine Command, he has a tour of the painting chapter in there that tells you why Jesus is hanging backwards on the cross because that's the way it was shown to him by an apparition. He had voices that spoke to him about the hand of God in the painting. He said he was uh, struggling with trying to paint a hand because he tried to paint it like a hand, person's hand. And he heard the voice behind him and said, it's a uh, spirit. So he turned around to see who said it, but no one was there. So then it didn't take him long to do the hand because it's just supposed to keep the circles the whole universe and that he can throw seeds out and turn into planets or like a farmer tosses seeds he can toss the planets but he had a voice and then when he was uh, when he thought he was through painting the divine command he went and laid down in bed because he was, said he was just exhausted and he said, give me some sign that I have completed the painting. It was just like the painting instructed by God himself. So he was laying there and all of a sudden the room became uh, like there's no oxygen. Like he couldn't breathe. And a, a figure appeared at the uh, foot of the bed. Just no face or anything, just like a figure appeared there. And then the figure became, it got closer and closer to him, and it hovered over him. And he said, oh my God, have mercy. And all of a sudden, it disappeared, and then his uh, lungs filled up with oxygen. But he said that was to him a sign the painting was complete. 